I'd like to talk a little bit more about the fascination with prime numbers. It's it's a really big thing at the moment, the, the mystery of symmetry within the prime numbers. And I'm very particularly interested in what we call the twin primes. And I'm going to show you the, how that twin primes relate directly to what we call 369 code. And when we're talking about 369 code, I'm talking what we call about uh, mod 9 or digital compression. And last time when I talked about prime numbers, I, I, I was focusing on what we called the odd numbers. I was looking at all the odd numbers. There was no even numbers in this chart. And when I wrote 1, 3, 5, 7, 9, all the way with rings and rings, we ended up with an eight-armed cross. But So this is a continuation of some of the insights that I've had. And you can see on this chart, I connected all the twin primes. So this was exploring symmetry. Um, here we have three twin primes in a row here. So I started analysing it and I came up with some very interesting discoveries, which is really about um, the fascination with mathematicians is we want to discover what, how do we predict the next largest prime number in the universe? That's, this is the biggest mathematical problem for thousands of years. It, it was actually solved by um, James McKinney in his book called Calculate Primes. And I've been wanting to share this with a lot of maths teachers, but they find it incredible that there is a solution to prime numbers, and there is. The, the, here's, the half solution is to write the consecutive numbers, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. If we write a ring of 24 consecutive numbers, we and we plot where all the prime numbers are, like um, five is prime, seven is prime, 11 is prime, 13 is prime, and we can see that 37 is prime here. We, 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 we end up with what we, is called a four-arm cross. So we're not looking at the eight-armed cross that, that I used last week. So when we study the four-arm cross, we realise that um, we're going to study the position of the twin primes. And the first thing that I've learned about twin primes, which I've not seen anybody write about in any book, so what I'm showing you now about twin primes, let's just take any two twin primes... Um, I can see here, for example, uh, 17 and 19 are twin primes. If I add up 17 plus the 19, we end up with 36. And the sum of 36, which means if we take away 9 from 36 and another 9, it's called continued subtraction of 9, we end up with a 9. Or the quick way is to say, what's the sum of 3 plus 6? We, by adding the digits we end up with the digital compression. So I'm saying that this twin prime, 17 plus 19, adds up to a 9. You could look at these two twin primes, um, 11 and 13. 11 and 13 add up to 24. The sum of 24 is 6. So let's find another twin prime, 5 and 7. 5 and 7 is 12. Take away 9, we end up with 3. Or you could have said 12 is 1 plus 2 equals 3. So it works out that if you explore all the other twin primes, like 41, there's, we could put 41 and 43 here. They're, they're prime, the sum of that is 84. But what it works out, the, so not only, not only do all the twin primes add up to either 3, 6 or 9, they do something else as well. Um, but they're all divisible by 12. So 43 and 41 is 84 and 84 is divisible by 12. So let's just summarize what we've done. We said that in mod 9, mod 9 means instead of a clock of 12, imagine there's just nine numbers. So when we get to 10, if, we're, if we've got 1 to 9, when we get to the number 10, well, it's really a 1. So we only use 1 to 9. So we said before that 5 plus 7 equals 12 and if you take away 9 the sum is a, is a 3 so that's for this twin prime here and then we said 11 plus 13 equals 24 and that adds up to a 6 and then we said another twin prime 17 plus 19 equals 36 it equals a 9 and if you look if you kept exploring 41 plus 43 um and all the others, it goes to infinity. What we're looking for is a pattern with the 369. We're hoping it would go 369, 369, 369, or some repeatable pattern. But unfortunately, 
um, there's no observable linear pattern with all the threes and sixes and nines for me to say, hey, it has a periodicity of 48 repeating digits or 108 repeating digits. We, we would like that because that's going to help us predict the next biggest prime number in the universe. So, but what we have is a clue that a prime number and a prime number's twin primes must be a three, six or nine. And in between the twin primes, um, we know that um, all, we know that the sum of any twin we know that the sum of any individual um, prime number like thirteen it can't be a three six or nine because thirteen adds up to four. If you look at seventeen, just a, an individual prime number seventeen is one plus seven equals eight. So we know that any prime number cannot have a digital compression of a three six or nine. But when we look at its pairs when we look at twin primes, the pairing of um, twin primes, we know that they can be a three, six or nine. And another thing about a twin prime is that we look at um, a pair like 17 and 19, what's the number in between? We say, oh, it's 18. So a twin prime is separated by one number and that one number is always divisible by six because 18 is divisible by six. Here we've got 11 and 13, the number between them is 12 is 12 divisible by 6. So that's another thing about twin primes. But what I said before, every twin prime, like 41 plus 43, the sum of any twin prime is always divisible by 12. Okay, and just to say, so I just, no one's ever put that in print. I just wanted to get that on record, that twin primes can only add up to a 3, 6 or 9 when we take away 9, 9, 9. But that's called mod 9, modulus 9, clock 9. But let's now have a look at mod 10. So imagine the, the clock doesn't have 12 hours. Imagine a clock has only got 10 hours or 10 numbers. Um, so um, what, this time we're going to take away 10, 10, 10. So let's look, at, um, to, let's look at some twin primes, 59 and 61. So here we've got 59 and 61. I'm writing with my left hand here, I'm ambidextrous. How did I get these numbers? Because I went 1 to 24 in order. And then the next ring, even though that this is 24 here, I jumped up. So this is how I got 25. 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31. And you can see that 29 and 31 are twin primes. We're going to add them up. Um, 35. See, there's another twin prime here. But this is called a pseudo prime because 35 is on the prime number cross, right? There's, there's the four arms of the prime number cross. 37 is prime, but its other pair, 35, is divisible by 5 and 7. So that's called a pseudo prime, but we need the pseudo primes to help discover the pattern. So when, um, what's his name, James McKenney discovered this prime numbers, he was working with what we call the pseudo primes. And... Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take away, I'm going to look at, say, I'm um, going to look at some twin primes, but this time, instead of taking away 10, instead of taking 9 like I did before, we take away 10. So 59 plus 61 is 120. If I kept taking away 10, 10, 10, um, the, it's really just like we're looking at the last digit. So the mod 10, 120 mod 10 is a zero. If we look at 11 plus 13, another twin prime, the sum is 24. And we, if we took away 10 from 24, you get 14. Take away another 10, you left 4. But you just look at the last digit, equals 4. Another one here, 17 plus 19. 17 plus 19 is 17 and 19 is there. So 17 plus 19 equals 36. And the last digit is a 6. And it, what it, it works out that it can only, when we take away 10, it can only be a 0, 4, or 6. So if we're looking for infinite twin primes, we've got two tools. We take away 9, it can only be a 3, 6, or 9. Or we take away 10, and a twin prime can only end in a 0, 4, or 6. So these are unpublished um, facts and gems about twin primes, which I think is essential for cracking this code.